Hi, I'm Patrick, and this is the mach -E Vlog. We are at ACT Expo, and right now we're at the Autel booth with Dan. We're gonna go ahead and dive right in and learn what Autel is doing here and about all of their charging solutions. So, uh, you wanna introduce yourself, Dan, and then we'll dive in? Absolutely. Yes, yeah, so I'm Dan Larson, Product and Solutions Manager with Autel Energy. And behind us, we'll start with this. We'll just work our way through the booth. There's, you, you guys have a lot of different things. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about Autel, first of all? Like, uh, I, we've reviewed a couple of your home chargers, but that's not all you do. You have this whole uh, portfolio of products. Yeah. Yeah, so we're a fully vertical manufacturer. So hardware, software, everything is made in-house. Um, we've actually been around for about 20 years. We started out in the automotive diagnostics base. Yep. And uh, you know we're really leveraging that experience to help make the charging experience better for all end users and for operators. Very cool. Yeah. yeah, like I said, we have a couple of the home chargers, but like this, this is like a, not necessarily gonna be installed in your home. Yeah. Um, tell us about this product. Yeah, so this is our AC Ultra. It's a dual 19.2 kilowatt charger. So it's a true simultaneous uh, 80 amps each port simultaneously. Oh, wow. So the, uh, the feed for this is two separate 28, 240 circuits, each on their own 100 amp breaker. Um, and that'll get you the full 80 amps out of each port. Um, if there are limitations though, on the infrastructure side. So let's say you have an existing single port charger with only one power feed. You can do a single power feed into this and then it's power sharing between the two ports at that point. So then you could do 40 and 40 simultaneously right. or 80, 80 amps to one port. Um, we also have an internal dip switch on each, on each port as well. So if you need to dial it down to let's say limit it at 32 amps per port, you can do that. It as well. So a lot of different solutions there. Now, I know, uh, like we we charged at Resorts World, and there's some Autel charges there. We we use the regular like uh, 50 amp yep. charger, but I heard on the other floor there's some 80 amp chargers. Was it the, are these units at Resorts World or? Yeah, I think there's eight or ten of these up on. The, it's the next yeah. uh, the next floor up in that parking garage. Yeah, we we use the low powered ones. We have a Maki. -E. We can't use the additional power, but if you right. had like a Lightning you would get a faster, quicker charge. Um, and that's one of the rare deployments of like ADAF chargers because most people right. don't go uh, for like public charging like that, but you guys do, or have yeah. that available for people to do that. Exactly, yeah, I mean, there's you know a handful of vehicles right now that have that 19.2 kilowatt acceptance rate, but as battery sizes keep going larger on the vehicle side, um, the acceptance rate is gonna keep going up too. So we really wanted a future proof with this product. So um, it's really a good solution for um, you know, just think of this as being ideal for anywhere that people are on site for like, let's say six to eight hours. So right. uh, workplace charging, overnight charging, anything like that, it's really ideal for. Yeah, I hope some hotels put these in because like oh, yeah. the more throughput you can get, leaving the hotel with a 100% charge, that'd be awesome. We'll move down here. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yes. DC compact. So now we're in the DC charging, leaving AC. So this is like your entry level DC or beginning? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So we call this one our DC compact. So it's 40 kilowatts total output. It'll do 40 to one vehicle or 20 20 split between the two ports. Right. Um, and this is really kind of a sweet spot in the industry because, you know, 40 kilowatts per hour, I mean, it'll still, you know, charge, you know, the average battery pack size on most vehicles is like 80 kilowatts right, right. now. So um golf courses restaurants retail movie theater um, movie theater yeah places where people are inside they're around two hours five years. <laughs> yeah um and yeah it's a nice small footprint as well um we have this as a wall mounted version uh, right this is obviously the pedestal mounted um you can wall mount these or you can also uh we have a trolley version we have two of them in the ride and drive out in the parking lot out oh, there okay. um so on wheels with a uh three-phase hubble connector uh, for you know, fleet disconnect. So we have a lot of uh, a lot of fleets. Like think of like medium heavy de heavy vehicles where right. maybe it's a large vehicle and you don't want to have to jostle those around to a fixed charger. You want to be able to wheel the charger over to where the vehicles are. Oh, I so, never thought about that, but yeah, yeah I guess that flexibility so, is key. Yeah. Now, of course, I see CCS one connector on here, but I'm assuming as everybody is. You guys are prepared for NACS as well. Absolutely, yeah. So you can, we're accepting orders on any of our products. You can get them with the J3400. Um, I'll be delivering on those orders like starting next month. Very so, cool. Yeah. All right, should we get into big more power? Absolutely. We'll squeeze in here. Yeah. Um, beautiful screen here. Thank you. Now, 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 one of the things that we always see out 
while we're charging is like they they had beautiful screens, but yeah. they get sun damage. Is is that technology getting better and better as we get deeper into you know the EV charging world? It is, yeah. Yeah, so we, you know, we've made our own hardware on the uh, diagnostic side for, you know, many years now. And so, um, you know, the screen durability, obviously, that's a big thing. So these are IK10 rated. So you can drop a bowling ball on the screen. It's not going to break. Nice. Um, and then also, uh, yeah, this, you know, reliability, longevity of the screens, too. Um, so we make, think, think of a, a automotive tablet. Uh, right. or surviving the elements of a automotive repair shop. So, yeah. you know, all of our scan tools have, you know, uh, we perfected that durability and design and well, makes water sense. intrusion yeah. and all of that. So we took all that and incorporated that into the screen design on these two. So, um, yeah, and all of the content can be customized. So whoever the owner or operator is of our chargers, you can push your own ads to the screen. So we have a lot of uh, restaurants, retail that are putting today's daily special on there. A lot of fleets are using it as like messaging for their drivers and you yeah. can control all the content right from our cloud platform. So it's a really good solution there. We were just talking to a friend in uh, Colorado and they were looking at like, uh, they wanted their city to get some chargers. Uh, and that's one of the things that they're talking about. It's like, wouldn't it be great to advertise like your local businesses in the city right there on the screen? Cause like, I, I know when I plug in, it's like, yeah, I'll bring up Google Maps. It'd be really cool to be like, you know, go to the coffee shop across the street, mention the charger and get 50 cent off a cup of coffee or, or whatever. Absolutely. So yeah. very, very cool. Um, and what is the output of this in amperage and kilowatts? So you can, so 20 kilowatt power modules on this one, and you can configure it anywhere from 60 kilowatts all the way up to 240 kilowatts, just depending on uh, the needs at the site. So um, this right here is our 240 kilowatt um, fully, uh, fully loaded. So um, you can, if you're going 120 kilowatts or below, mm -hmm. you can do it with our 200 amp cables. If you're doing 140 to 240 kilowatts output, then you'll need our CCS boost cables, which yeah. are 400 amp peak, 300 amp continuous. Very cool. And, and the, the idea is like providing flexibility for the customer that might say like, uh, this is all we need because we don't want to invest in the, the higher dollar amount or let's start with this and then maybe they can expand. Can they expand it down the road or is that? Hard? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, it's, it's very easy to upgrade these. So, cool. um, you know, a common scenario we're running into is, you know, let's say it's a car dealership, for example. Right. Um, they might contact their utility and say, you know, Hey, I want to put into these chargers and the utility might say, well, Hey, today the transformer supplying your site can only, you know, you can only do hundred kilowatts, right. Uh, with the two chargers. Um, so they might buy two equipped with 100 kilowatts internally. And then, you know, obviously utility companies, um, they want to sell more electricity, but yeah. there's transformer, uh, you know, backlogs and shortages. So they might yeah. say it's a year out before we can upgrade that transformer. So somebody could install this today as 100 kilowatts. And then once that transformer is upgraded, then it's they don't have to replace the charger at that point. It's yeah. really just an upgrade kit. Uh, you install the additional power modules. There's some different firmware we got to load on there, and different you know stickers and labeling for the charger. Um, but uh, at that point, it's uh, going to be putting out the full two forty. At that point, it makes a lot of sense too. And I can imagine some people would like put one in, and then as they see the utilization rates creep up, it's like one way to, you know, make that uh, time where a car is plugged in less is yeah. to make it faster. Make it faster now. Your utilization rates will drop down. So Absolutely. that's pretty cool. Um, should we take a dive? Is there another one that we could take a look at or? Absolutely. I yeah, see a got, pretty one over there too. Yeah, we have our residential products here. Oh, here we go. Um, but then uh, this one here, uh, this is our DC high power. So this is our newest yeah. launch product. That looks beautiful, by the way. Thank you. So it's an external power cabinet. So you can do 320, 480, or 640 kilowatts out of the power cabinet. Okay. And then you can pair up to four dispensers for a total of eight ports. If you're doing air-cooled cables, um, or if you're going liquid-cooled, then it would be a max of two dispensers, total of four ports, uh, all, all, all sharing power from that. And I imagine this is like uh, Nevi compliant, or yes, design, or people are interested in it for Nevi sites. I'll say that exactly. Um, and the, and the being uh, separate from the power unit is uh, gives you a lot of flexibility. I would imagine like site design, um, as well as flexibility and um, you know 
putting your dispenser with whatever power you you have. Right. Yeah, so you can you can mount it up to 100, 150 feet away from the dispensers. So a lot of people they'll put the cabinet itself, you know, behind the trees, behind the bushes on yeah. site, and then you just mount the dispensers at the crib level and protected. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and, and I would imagine that's one of the things that's really key too, is because uh, having all of that out in your parking lot, that's a, that takes up a lot of space. Yes. But if you can like remove some of that and put it and also protect it. So that's pretty interesting. Yeah. Very cool. Um, and I forget what you said, the power, or did you say the power outage? Or you did uh, up, up, up to 640 up kilowatts. To 600. Okay, cool. That is yep. really awesome. Okay. Yeah. And then we can circle around real quick. We'll, Absolutely. We'll touch base on the familiar uh, home units. Because I think we reviewed one of these. I think it might have been reviewed that one. Um, yep. But this is sort of like the same thing, but it's more for businesses so they can have RFID, a little bit of screen uh, output there. Yeah, so this is the, the commercial version. So you can actually resell energy, collect revenue uh, via QR payment. Um, you know, it's got the screen so you can, you know, push all, all of our products with the screen so you can customize the content on there. Uh, think of it as like the screen saver on your computer. Uh, right. When the charge is not in use, it's going to be displaying that advertisement. Um, and then, yeah, this is our 12 kilowatt residential. Oh, and I see the Tesla connector on um, this yeah, one. With, with the NACS on this one. Um, you can obviously get it with G1772 or NACS. That's the one we're familiar with. But yeah. I, I, it, it's really nice seeing the flexibility, um, you know, for the customer as well, or consumer level of being able to choose which connector you want. So that's really neat. Um, and then I think we'll finish up with this one here. Um, another, I would assume, business oriented, I'm not going to be putting this in my house. <laughs> Well, so yeah, this is our V2X. So it's going to be a 12 kilowatt bidirectional. Um, the the auto OEMs aren't necessarily ready right. for bidirectional yet, and so um, yeah, we're kind of delaying the launch a little bit on this one. Uh, yeah, just for that reason, because obviously there's not that much of a use case for it on the residential side. But we also have a 60 kilowatt bidirectional, oh, uh, cool. which is going to be you know designed for commercial use. Um, yeah. And that's, uh, you know, obviously school buses, right. medium heavy fleets with large vehicles. Um, you know, a lot of times they're sitting and they can, yeah. they can do energy arbitrage. Uh, there's there's a lot makes, of talk around here. We've multiple times that. people talked about school buses specifically because they're used in the morning, used in the afternoon, and then the other times they can be putting uh, energy back in the grid potentially. Absolutely. So uh, very, very interesting use case. And bi-directional, um, I've been excited about it. I've been saying like we got solar put in our house uh, last year I didn't get a battery put on the wall because I'm like, eventually I want to have a battery on wheels I drive around. Um, but the, the big thing is like, there's still like a lot of little details to work out with bi-directional, including right. regulatory approval. Because uh, I know like even to connect our solar, we had to get approval from the uh, the energy provider. Yeah. It's the same thing with uh, bi-directional charging. So. Yep. Yep. Um, a lot of the utilities are preparing for it. Um, you know, demand response. I mean, there's going to be so many use cases to where it's beneficial. Um, but everyone's just got to yeah. adopt. Uh, and, and, yeah. and in addition, like the protocols, because like it's the same thing as like getting DC fast charging to work. Um, cars and the, the chargers have to all communicate and work together. And now when you're talking about cars, charger, and the energy grid all have to communicate, it's like, yeah. let's get that working right. Yep. So. It's a fluid conversation for sure. Uh, but, um, you know, there's a lot of really bright minds working to make this happen yeah. because obviously it's, uh, you know, it's the future, uh, and there's it's going to help the grid. It's going to help, um, you know, just stability uh, for energy delivery and uh, energy reliance. So it's and hopefully uh, for somebody like me, uh, backup power for my car, uh, for my house, as well as maybe some energy savings because I can ship my energy load. So absolutely, that's down the road. We'll get there eventually. But this yep. is really exciting. Um, I, I think one of the things I really like when we come to visit Autel is like you guys really do have such a great portfolio. You know, from the home user, bi-directional, big power, uh, medium power. So it's really cool to see. And it's yeah. always a pleasure to visit with you guys. Well, thank you. Yeah, we're, uh, you know, our goal is to be kind of the one-stop shop for uh, anything EV charging related. So um, makes sense. And we, you know, we are going to be launching some uh, energy storage solutions as well, uh, you know, paired with our charging solutions too. So uh, well, that makes sense. more news on that to come. Um, and I'll be sure to fill you guys in on that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, look us up. We'll be ready to cover that. That sounds really exciting. Awesome. Sounds like the type of stuff I'm interested in. So yep. um, thank you guys for watching. Um, thank you for giving us time to give us an overview of Autel. And we'll Absolutely. see you at the next.
ACT Expo as well. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Thanks.